Welcome to the horror section, a series of videos and podcasts all about, you guessed it, horror. Brought to you by the Valkyries. As usual, the hosts are myself, Heather, the Valkyries Editor-in-Chief, and Georgie, the Valkyries Senior Editor. Today, we're joined by friend of the Valks and freelance entertainment journalist, Eamon Jacobs. Hi, Eamon. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. That's all right. How have you been? How are you coping with the current I'm, situation? I'm surviving. I'm surviving. Um, I'm, I'm rocking the full Kenobi so far, yes. hair-wise. I did see your little, uh, your little at-home cosplay. That was a work I mean, of art, frankly. Thank you. Um, I was aiming for Renaissance Kenobi. It was, it was special. I think people will... That'll, that's what they'll remember from 2020. It'll be Renaissance Kenobi. Corona so. who? I think yeah. you mean Renaissance Kenobi. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get that commissioned into an oil painting. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, I'll hang it up. It's fine. It's great. I'll um, buy it. Thanks. I really appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a whole thing. I'm excited. So, tell us, Eamon, a little bit about you. What is it about um, film and horror films and the sort of entertainment world that you love? Uh, to sum it up, I'm just a geek, <laughs> essentially. Fair. Um, backstory, my parents wanted me to shut up talking about films to them, so I started <laughs> writing about it instead, nice. and then thought, hey, why not get paid for it? Um, so that's kind of it, really. It's just an excuse to talk about the stuff I like. Mm -hmm. uh, Horror-wise, it's an excuse to talk about the stuff that freaks me out. Body horror in particular, which yeah. the first time watching this, uh, I didn't expect in the slightest. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Those nightmare sequences, I'm sure we'll get into that yeah. <laughs> in, in depth a bit more. But yeah, body oh, horror yeah. for me is a, is a bit of a, a hook. I like it. It's it, anything that makes me sort of look at myself and go, ee, that'd be nasty, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> it? Yeah. If it sticks with me afterwards and I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to think about pustules on my face, but then I keep thinking about it. Yeah, then that's fair. Yeah, that's, that's my stuff. Yeah, that's you know? legit. I mean, the fly. <laughs> I saw the fly a, a lot earlier than I should have done, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and that one stuck with me for a few days. I'll put it that way. Me too, but uh, for different reasons, probably. Jeff <laughs> Goldblum, let me guess. Yeah, maybe. Knew it. I knew Shock. it. Shock. Shock. Peak Goldblum. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, so that's that's me. That's that's why I like horror, mainly because of Jeff Goldblum and The Fly. We should we'll write him a letter and we'll let him know and we'll thank him <laughs> for his. I'm not allowed to talk to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Boundaries have been set. <laughs> Legally, yeah. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke. Georgie has no had no has restraining, restraining orders, orders against her. For now. For now. <laughs> Eamon's is pending, that's okay. <laughs> uh, right, so as long as none of us get any restraining orders, today we're talking about It Comes at Night. So it came out in 2017, um, directed and written by Trey Edward Schultz, uh, who also directed the 29 film Waves. Have either of you seen Waves? I have I've not, not seen, seen it. Waves. No, I haven't, but it's, it's on my list. It's meant to be amazing. Um, I don't want to say that it made waves, but we made some waves. You just did, didn't you? Ah, you're so welcome. <laughs> love it. Love you're it. So welcome. I love it. Okay, so it also stars uh, Joel Edgerton as Paul and Christopher Abbott as Will, uh, both playing the father and husband um, to the key families. So we'll start with Joel. What are your thoughts on Joel? Any key roles that stand out for you? Wow. Is, is kind of my reaction uh, when this ended mm -hmm. um, because, because of the way it sets up Joel's character um, you're automatically sort of following him and the family as your protagonists yep. sort of thing and that view is challenged by the end of the film completely it flips it on his head um, particularly in that moment in the woods yep. Um, I don't know if we, do we want to get to spoilers or not? Um, I mean, you yeah, know, it's been out for three years, three years. so I, it's um, on you. If you've not seen it, it's on you, really. Yeah. I mean, we're going to spoil some stuff. I am sure, 
Um, yeah. Uh, so honestly, when he shoots um, Andrew mm -hmm. at the end, that was when I was like, actually, he's the villain of this film. <laughs> um, <laughs> hang on a minute. <laughs> Uh, he's the bad guy. Yeah, no, it, yeah. I, I was, I was like genuinely in shock at the first time. I was just a bit like, okay, mm -hmm. all right, and then slowly realised that from the start he's always been the villain. You know, he's imposed all these rules. He's killed, you know, quite a few people, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. he's just a bit of a bastard masquerading as a good guy. Really, that's a really good way to sum it up. Mm. Um, yeah, for sure. Georgie, similar thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I think George and um, his acting is, is really quite quite something in this film as well. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know we've spoken before about how bad acting, I feel, is more prominent and more important in horror films. If someone's yeah. a bad actor in a horror film, it just ruins the whole thing completely. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's, it's a ridiculously kind of visceral and emotional performance. I think he pulls it off really well. But it's like Eamon said, you think, Oh, you know, he's trying to protect everybody. Then at the end, you're like, wait a second. <laughs> We've it's, been hoodwinked. The way, literally, <laughs> the way it builds and all those different kind of layers you get, as you mentioned, with the dream sequences and all. I think it's the way they created the character and the way yeah. he plays him is really quite impressive. Yeah, for sure. I think you're right. I think it's almost that we had a similar sort of conversation quite recently when we were talking about The Walking Dead. Um, mm -hmm. And we were talking about, um, I really like the governor and mm -hmm. I really like that storyline. And, and you sort of look at that from the people who live in Woodbury. I think it's Woodbury. Um, you know, they're just living their life. And then all of a sudden you have another rival group come and invade and upset everything and kill quite a lot of people. But if you're watching the show or you're reading the comics, well, that's, you know, the person who is our hero who's leading that charge because he doesn't necessarily like what they're doing or he thinks he's right. And then that, I think that's what we get from Joel in this film. You think, yeah, you're setting these rules down because you obviously know more than we do. You have obviously survived this long. Your family's alive and you must be doing everything that you have to be because we spent, you know, so long with him and his family initially before um, Christopher Abbott's character and their family come along. So you sort of just, we trust him, which is mm -hmm. why I feel such a big betrayal at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like, yeah, we'll, he'll keep us safe. Oh, yeah. no, no, he won't. And I think because obviously Christopher Abbott's character invades their house first, yeah. it's almost like, a, oh, okay, well, he mm -hmm. has to be the bad guy. Like, if yeah. you're sticking to general conventions. Definitely, you know what I mean? yeah. This family that we've sort of quickly come to know um, and sort of feel sorry for, especially because of that beginning. Yes, um, yeah, instantly we sympathise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, and it is a harrowing opening as well. Yeah. Honestly, I was not quite teary, but I was just a bit like, ooh, ooh, yeah. that hurt. I um, forgot, I'd forgotten how it opened. I, re I did a rewatch this morning. Um, it's like, yeah, real quick okay yeah yeah, yeah. you're like yeah and i'm like okay i remember like the red door and i remember the nice dog and i'm like okay oh, oh i know oh, oh guys that's the oh, real God. tragedy of the, whole film. of the whole thing we will give you that spoiler the dog does die so brace yourselves because as you it's can tell there with i am legend i think with the dog deaths yeah i just sure. oh yeah and he's, he's like a real good boy as well, like 10 out of 10. Oh, no, no. And they find good him boy. He's, like... he's not, <laughs> but he's in a better place because Joel's a dick and now he's gone. Yeah, to... he doesn't have Joel to contend with. Yeah, he's just gone fine. to a little, you know, to the little puppy farm. It's fine. All dogs go to heaven. Yes, <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> now there is a film. There oh. is a film. Oh, oh. 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 Cinema. cinema. Peak cinematic <laughs> triumph right there. <laughs> I always really like number two, but anyway. yeah, same, same. Yeah. That's another podcast for another yeah. day. <laughs> Moving on to why some of the sequels are the best in animated films. Um, <laughs> no. uh, let's talk about Christopher Abbott then. So his role as Will, um, I thought was impressive. Mm. Um, I'd only come across him previously in um, the awful, awful show Girls. Um, in the sinner as well, which yes. I only just realised, um, mm. and he is now. 
I don't mean this in this film, but he's basically budget Kit Harrington. Right. Like, if you look at his mm. face, he's just like, you've got yeah. Kit Harrington, which is, I don't know, from Top Man, River Island. You're, 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 you're sort of upper end chains. Chris Rabbit's from Primark. Oh, scathing. That's, that's, that's scathing. how I kind of, that's how I first saw it. And when I saw this... I like that you've put Top Man as, like, a top Well, I was just, it was just... It's not a top tier, let's face it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I was just trying to think <laughs> higher end. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> stop judging me. There's very <laughs> limited choices of clothing shops in Southampton. Leave me I alone. Know, I know. Um, I <laughs> <laughs> um, But when I saw this, I was actually, like, so impressed. Yeah. Um, the tension between him and Joel Edgerton is... Oof, palpable yeah. um especially... i think it being a small cast as well helps yeah. that he gets to be um he sort of almost gets a leading role alongside mm. um joel edgerton yeah definitely especially in their sort of final confrontation mm -hmm. as well i was i was on edge i was on edge mm -hmm. it was great um and i think it's kind of it comes full circle really doesn't it it's, that's yeah. how their relationship started and that's how their relationship mm -hmm. ends um, and that opening scene tells you everything you need to know about the pair of them. Uh, and it's only at the end when yeah. you realise that it, their relationship has never changed. It's always been one of tension mm. and of conflict, be it passive aggressive <laughs> or completely aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> it, full uh, aggressive. It, yeah. Full aggressive. Aggressive, full, aggressive, yeah. Aggressive, aggressive, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it gets aggressive, aggressive. It I mean, does get, How yeah. much more aggressive can you get than shooting somebody or beating their face in with a rock? Mm, for sure. I think uh, as well, we almost get a glimpse of that when um, they're driving to where the family are and they get jumped by them two men in the woods. Mm, um, and as much yeah. as Will is, like, in the fray, he tries to stop him from shooting him. Yeah, to sort definitely. of try and, you know, get any information or whatever it would have been revealed. But it's almost without hesitation that um, Joel just pulls the trigger. Yeah, it gives On a good both insight of them. the dynamic On both as well, of them, yeah. Yeah. yeah mm. Because I think at that point, you're still being carried along thinking that Joel's the sort of hero and you're thinking, right, okay, so... Christopher Abbott's obviously set this up. It's he's going to get jumped. It's a big trap. The whole thing was a lie, and you still, even beyond that point, carry on with that sort of mistrust. And I think all the way through, like the idea of like mistrust and betrayal and the stranger in your house is like such a huge theme. Yeah, it, it especially when they crashed. Mm. Um, I was expecting uh, Will to to jump. Uh, Joel Edgerton yeah. um, and start, you know, aligning himself with the other two or they were his mates or whatever. Yeah, for sure. And I was kind of shocked when Joel shot them both uh, and Will just didn't seem to react in a, oh, they were my friends or what are you yeah. doing? Do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But it's like you say, he sort of instantly goes to shoot them. Yeah. Um, and it, it's kind of implied that that's his, been his reaction the entire time. Um, yeah. It's definitely I, a, like a shoot first, ask questions, like after they've tied him to a tree for three days and put <laughs> a bag on his head, kind of later. <laughs> yeah, is that meant to be like a day or a couple of days? I think Cause... that's a day, because he comes, does he come like, um, is he come, I don't know what to say, he comes at night, but he comes <laughs> like, I'm sure he comes like, either like early morning or mm. sort of at a point where he is outside over a night but surely that would then make him more dangerous because it's they like say that number one, isn't it? yeah because mm. if he didn't have anything if it is whatever it is he's probably got it now because you've tied him to a post for a day <laughs> and like think, you know um they say that the granddad uh, started showing signs after yes. a day, didn't he? Um, yeah. So I guess like it was maybe over just over a twenty-four hour period. Yeah, I think but it was probably like a long like, time to be tied to a tree. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't have like a wee or anything. Like he's going to be smelly already. He's walked fifty <laughs> what he, miles. 
washed his hands and sang happy birthday twice, then it wouldn't happen. Would it? <laughs> That's exactly. true. Maybe it would have all been fine if they'd yeah. sang happy birthday more. If he just injected himself with some disinfectant. If he just mainlined some flash, yeah. then we wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is all Christopher Abbott's fault. God damn you, Christopher Bloody Abbott. Bloody Christopher Abbott. <laughs> Budget Kit Harrington. What are you playing at? <laughs> damn you, Primark boy. <laughs> Primark boy. Primark Chris. What a, what a dude. So, okay. So, initial reactions then when the film was announced or sort of you saw the trailers or the posters, was it something that stood out for you or was it something you've come to watch maybe from word of mouth or a bit later on? Uh, I remember seeing the poster. I, I don't, I didn't see the trailer. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it was on Twitter uh, that I saw the poster and it was the red door. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I was kind of a bit like, hey, it's a red door. Not really, <laughs> not really seeing the hype. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think it was on like Amazon Prime or something. And I was like, oh, it's that film with George Edgerton. I'll put it on. Yeah. Um, and it's, I was kind of impressed at how scary the red door kind of is mm-hmm. um, without necessarily doing much like there's not well yeah yes, the door, there, yes. there's just obviously the scene with the the, the dog with mm-hmm. the bumping noise behind it um but it kind of just becomes mm-hmm. the sort of symbol for like fear of the outside and fear mm-hmm. of the infection or fear of an invisible enemy etc etc yeah um so i think it's it's kind of i think the film's laden with a lot of imagery actually oh, um, for sure. of like fear of the outside and mm-hmm. of like you know uh, I think it's because of that, the sprawling long shots that it has of, of the outside woods um, mm-hmm. and even like the corridors in the house it's con- you're just waiting for something to, to come out, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think it's, yeah. it was that poster that sort of struck me uh, while I wasn't, wasn't impressed with it at first having seen the film I'm like mm-hmm. actually that's quite powerful Yeah. So. what about yeah. you Georgie? Interestingly enough, is the other poster that I liked with the the one with, with the dog. dog. Yeah, it looks like a like a brand new album cover or something. Like yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, it's for sure. Very. I think that was really um really effective because you immediately yeah. it's like they always say everyone knows horror film trope animals can see and sense things people can't. So you see a a dog looking out into the woods, you're like, some shit's gonna go down. Something's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. and, you know that's that's exciting, and I think. One of the big bugbears that a lot of people have with the film is that the marketing was a little bit disjointed with the film itself. Yeah, for sure. I was going to say, actually, you've done the right thing for seeing it without having seen the trailer. Yeah. And because the trailer, you would think that was for a different film, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. You would think that was for something like A Quiet Place, where there is this big evil monster entity out there coming to get you. Mm -hmm. And I think you, 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 you definitely go into the film with a particular idea in your head of what it's going to be if you've seen that trailer yeah and the poster as well i said with the dog and then you watch it and you're like okay that's not what i was expecting and it, it's not like a letdown it's just it's, it's a like, different it's, film than what you had come film. to expect yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I guess i guess it plays with your expectations though do you know what i mean mm-hmm. um especially yeah. with a title like this um you know, you do expect some sort of physical manifestation, some sort of physical invader that's not just a human, yeah. you know, yeah. running from, a, you know, a, an infection. You you are expecting, like you say, a monster. Mm. Um, and that's kind of why I think it's a lot more powerful than, I'm not saying a quiet place is crap before you shoot me. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not too committed to the film. Uh, I think it's it, as a sort of, you know, survivalism post-apocalyptic movie it's a lot more yeah powerful. it's a big you know hollywood sort of blockbuster a quiet place ticks a lot of people's boxes mm. um like the perfect example i had of it recently was that my mum watched it and thought it was good and she hates yeah. horror films and would never watch anything like this so i think that has a certain level of audience mm. and you know they sort of really found that you know appealing and they've got the two big stars in it and you've got that really like family aspect where they are a hero trying to survive. It's almost like the action films of like the noughties, you know, like Vertical Limit and Lake Placid has got the one I meant, but what's the one um, with the... Uh, <laughs> Lake Placid. Yeah, Lake Placid. I don't know. Stick with Lake Placid. Yeah, that's fine. No, it's not even... 
<laughs> no, it's the one with the volcano and Pierce Brosnan. Um, oh. I don't the name of at all. Moana. It's yeah. not Moana. Moana. <laughs> and it's also not Volcano either. It was, um, I don't know what it's called. That's going to bug me. Never mind. Um, but it was. We're actually, all going to get a message later when you realise well, what what it is. Yeah, aren't you'll we? just hear it. I'll just be all of a sudden. I'll just be this voice across the country, <laughs> and it'll be me having remembered what it was called. Um, Never mind the coronavirus uh, no. press release. It's, it's going to be you. It's going to be me yeah. broadcasting about Pierce Brosnan. Um, I'm not a lecture, like I'm here today. <laughs> yeah, I'll have some little like microphones set up. It'll be amazing. Um, yeah, I think that's and I think that's sort of the difference. This is. Um, sort of definitely sat in a funny bit of the horror genre where it is um definitely a horror film but also like a thriller and maybe like a bit of a psychological sort of um look at the way these two families have to sort of coexist together in a tiny little space um yeah. because it's not just like two people turn up and there's another two people it's kids in someone else's house and there's a dog and then there's clashing ideologies and how things should be done and things should be organised. And I think the house, as much as anything, plays like quite a big role in like ramping the tension up. And like I think you it's said those, as well, with the, with long the corridors. corridors. Yeah. 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 And um, I really like the way they use light. Um, because, again, you're constantly expecting something to come out and grab you or to, to, to make you jump and although there are a few jump scares in this it is mainly sort of an exercise intention yeah. um and yeah uh when the kid i've forgotten his name but um the 17 year old kid teenager he's walking around with the light i was so impressed with child yeah i was so impressed with the way that you know each shot was was you know 80% darkness and you, you can only yeah. just see him as he's walking through yeah. it, was, it was perfect right um, so very that tense. kid then is also a massive creep do we agree oh absolutely yeah he, what a he's, weirdo he's got his own little crawl space yeah <laughs> not I'd a fan completely forgotten about that and I was watching it and I was like oh you creepy pervert like mm -hmm. just sneaking around mm -hmm. yeah didn't yeah. enjoy that at all <laughs> And that lighting makes it ten times worse. Yeah. He's being a little anyway. Yeah, it's almost like, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like he's the only one that can like almost freely move about the house, like completely unseen. And then when he's like peeking through his little like hidey holes and stuff, I was like, Oh sir, like are you what comes at night? Because that's gross. You're creepy. Oh. Like, leave him alone. <laughs> I really thought that I was going to be the first person to make that joke, so I'm really nah, glad. That was great. No, that was great. That joke. It's getting, it literally says in my notes, don't make this joke, and I was like, made that joke. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> 10 out of 10 pun. 10 out of 10 pun. Thank you. I'm so, actually proud of you. Well, well done. Oh, well, thank you. That's, this is a beautiful moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So moving on. Um... What aspects, we've sort of talked then about the aspects of the film that we thought worked really well. Uh, are there any points you thought that didn't really work that well? Any points that let the film down? Um, I think, I think it's the, it is the bit with the dog. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean, it's not, it's not a poorly executed moment. It is, it's still a great moment. But I think um, once you've seen the end of the film, it almost becomes like, right, okay, what was the point of the dog running away then? Yes. Um, because it mm -hmm. becomes kind of irrelevant because uh, mm -hmm. you're led, it's leading us to believe that there is somebody in the woods or there's something in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, okay, cool. The infection's out there, whatever. Um, <laughs> is that sentence from a news broadcast <laughs> on BBC or a podcast uh, about it comes at night? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think it just sort of, it kind of almost felt like filler on the rewatch because I was like, well, I know that there's nothing out there. So. Yeah, and it's never really, the same. Yeah. yeah, and it's never really explained as to what the dog saw, why yeah. he ran away, why he got so injured. Um, how yeah, he, got... he comes back and he's proper, proper messed Well, he's up, like about it? to die and he's yeah. like bleeding everywhere. And how he opened the door, I mean, he's a dog. Uh, this is true. He's a clever That's... boy. It's bad. <laughs> 
He's the goodest of boys. <laughs> He's the goodest of boys. Yeah, because um, I was reading as well, I was reading up on some sort of like trivia about the film. And apparently in the scene where the dog's barking at the woods, you can see a figure. But okay. I didn't notice the figure. Um, and I must admit, I didn't like pause it to have like a proper good scan, but I didn't see anyone. Um, I might have a look later to see if I can, but... Mm. Um, I, uh, I did sort of notice a similar thing when, uh, right at the start, when um, Joel and Will are driving, um, because there's, there's a sort of a, a moment where it's, it's just before the bullet hits the window, mm-hmm. um, and there's a couple of trees that look like somebody crouched down, and I was right. like, is that is that just my mind being like, right, well, he's gonna, something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Or was that intentional? Do you know what I mean? So I wonder yeah, if that is yeah. something that they fed throughout quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, I can't say I noticed that bit either uh, with no. the dog, though. No, I didn't notice. Um, and I thought it was really interesting because um, apparently all the cast and crew had to sign NDAs that forbode them from revealing what came at night. Now, whether that is a sort of a oh, PR God, line, in the mind, that's great. yeah, that's nice. yeah. Um, but whether that's true, whether that's a sort of a PR line to keep everybody wondering what he meant, I don't know. What would that's you? Really interesting. Yeah, what would that's you guess? Weird. Sort of was out there at night. Are we going down an infection route, or are we going down sort of a demon route? Even. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think I quite like the idea of uh, the kids' nightmares being somewhat real. Um, yeah. Maybe it's the it's the granddad uh, because you, that's a recurring sort of imagery mm-hmm. that comes through, uh, mm-hmm. and it terrified the shit out of me. Quite mm-hmm. frankly, uh, yeah. it's shriek that shrieking noise mm-hmm. uh, genuinely appeared in one of my dreams about a week after I watched it. Um, <laughs> And it took me a few days to realise what it was from, and I was like, oh, yeah. right, uh, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so <laughs> Only maybe, sleep in the daytime. Yeah, uh, maybe, you know, in a different cut of the film, maybe it was a vision of the granddad or something, I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to go with that, the granddad. I liked it. Georgie, what's your, what are you going to base it on? I, I mean, I don't think at any point during the whole film I thought it was going to be some kind of virus that came at night because I didn't realise they had knowledge of time. time. Yeah. So they would not be nocturnal or diurnal, but that might just be me. And yeah. um, I was thinking definitely because of who I am as a person, more like creature based, yeah. creature horror. I don't want to say like leshies and wendigos. But, but leshies and, and wendigos. But yeah, yeah something, something very mm-hmm. almost anthropomorphic, maybe yeah. human-ish, that kind of thing. Not, yeah. I can't say I was upset that it didn't because it was a nice twist. Yeah. But that's what I think I was led to believe. I think the trailer definitely did a lot of the legwork on that one as well for me, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think because the way that the dog is like so injured as well, it's like um, I noticed yeah. straight away that that his blood was a lot. <laughs> it was a different colour to the blood that like the kid and the granddad are spitting out like that is completely yeah, black. Yeah, they, they spit like yeah, black, very dark, black gooey stuff, yeah. Yeah, and that was just like normal blood and when he was saying, oh, he's sick, he's sick and I was like, right, okay, that's just a line that he's saying because this dog is fucked up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, for sure. And he's yeah. he's on the one hand trying to protect his kid from seeing his dog this way, which is, yeah. you know, so that's fine. But on the other hand, who hurt the dog? What who happened? Hurt the dog? Who hurt the dog? That's the most important question of that's this That's the film. only question I have, yeah. Who hurt the dog? <laughs> And why? And why would you do that? <laughs> why you a good egg? This? Go hurt one of the chickens or the goats. Or the goats. I'm not saying. I'm yeah, not saying get that Black that's William. Fine. It's fine. Yeah. Black William. Black Philip. Well played. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think you've ever said his name right in the whole. Thing. I haven't. I can never remember <laughs> what it is. It's normally Black Stephen. Um, oh, Black Timothy or something. It's great. <laughs> I just can't wow. remember ever. And I love the witch. I mean, I don't love the witch. It's horrifying, but. I love the witch. It, it's a great film, but it is yeah, horrifying. I get, I, I, I yeah. understand. Oh, Black Philip. Oh, Black Philip. Um, oh, apparently, Black, Black Philip kept headbutting the director. He did. I read that. I always really like that story. I love, I love like, it. Maybe he wasn't goth enough. It's like, <laughs> a bit lad. But, okay, so the reason why I was talking about Lars von Trier just earlier on um, is because the painting that we see very early on 
um, is mm. a Bruegel's painting, which is mm -hmm. titled The Triumph of uh, Over Death, or The Triumph of Death. Triumph of um, Death. Triumph of death, thank you. Um, but he was actually inspired by The Hunters in the Snow, which is another Bruegel painting, which mm -hmm. appears in the 2011 film Melancholia. Um, so do you think this painting that we see right at the beginning sort of sets the tone for the film? Do you feel like having seen all those scenes of death, you're sort of prepared for some of the things that are about to happen? So what I wrote down basically is I thought that the use of sort of religious slash renaissance mm -hmm. whatever iconography yep. was kind of a way of conveying that society is broken down already nice. um, yep. because it, it's quite sweeping as it shows mm -hmm. you know all these people clambering over one each other and killing each other and mm -hmm. it's a sort of pretty brutal piece. Yep. Um, I kind of just took that as like okay that's the rest of the world. This yeah. is the one little bubble of you know safety that mm. they've created and something's going to come in and you know upset mess it up um yeah. yeah that's kind of what i took from it really yeah i think that's a really good sort of um interesting point sort of like a signifier mm. for mm. society's breakdown around them um because is it like a, is it a bit of a cityscape as well and they sort of talk about the main cities having you know sort of almost fallen first um, and then now everybody sort of fled them and moved to the countryside. Yeah, because um, Chris Rabbit's character mentions that as soon as people in the city get sick, they left, didn't yeah. they? Um, but that's kind of the only sort of mention of cities, I think. Mm. Um, yeah, which from I think, my backstory stuff. Yeah, which I think really helped to sort of keep everything really isolated around that one little house. Mm. Or maybe quite a big house, because it seemed quite mazy. Mm. It, it was very labyrinth-like, wasn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Little, little just, nooks and crannies. If that was me and a family turned up, I'd be like, no, sorry, I don't have room. I don't live in a mansion. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. No, no, not for me. Happen, but like, sorry, yeah. off to the woods with you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no room. So I just think, I was always thinking sort of, you you almost made this sort of... Um, sort of labyrinth of a house that room seemed to be shot off especially the scene where um joel and chris have like whiskey in their grandfather's room and it's mm. only lit in like it's literally just like the light going round, and you see him like getting the whiskey but it's only like lit by a little lantern and you barely see them i think that's a really interesting um sort of shot and again like you were saying with the darkness and the use of light and stuff it's very claustrophobic. Mm. Yeah. Even I mean, even though everything's long and you know really quite big rooms, they they they're shot to look tiny. <laughs> yeah, and it's like that sort of oppressive nighttime of of mm. how dangerous the nighttime is. But we don't actually see a lot of nighttime. Like, On the outside, no. Yeah, we still get um, a lot of sitting around the dinner table, um, yeah. and then a few sort of creepy scenes, but. For a film, which is It Comes at Night, not huge amounts of night time. I think I would have liked some... Nightmares. Mm. Mm -hmm. I would have liked some outside shots at night, I think. You know, just sort of showing the house. Almost yeah. sort of As if something was watching. Woods. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. But then does that allude to there being something actually in the forest? I don't know. True. True, but then if it's the creepy granddad, like we said, uh, who knows? Who, who knows? knows? I tell you what, that first um, nightmare that the kid has at the mm. very start was terrifying. Mm. Holy shit. Yeah, I think, I think it, like I say, it's the scream. Yeah, I think that's almost sort of the, the first real, like, viscerally scary moment where you're like, oh my god. Yeah, it's because he throws his head back as well. Mm. I think what we were saying about the nightmares being particularly scary is true. Mm -hmm. However, if you're eagle-eyed, they suddenly become a lot scary when you realise that every time he has a nightmare, the aspect ratio of the movie changes. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you see the aspect ratio shrink, you know it's not real. Yeah. Which I think reduces oh. the, the tension. Because as soon as you see it go, whoop, you're like, okay, this isn't real. I need to be invested because it's a nightmare. And then at the end of the climax of the film, the aspect ratio changes again, mm -hmm. becomes narrower, 
until the end of the film, which is like, I guess, an interesting editing choice. But I think the fact that every time it's a nightmare, the screen becomes smaller, is just an instant giveaway and you immediately become less invested in what's going to happen because you know it's not real and happening mm-hmm. to them. So I think yeah. that's like an, an editing choice that, that didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I mean, like you said, about the long shots and all of that was incredible and has a very A24 vibe to it. But I think mm-hmm. with the aspect ratios, I'm going to stop doing this now. Like, I'm just <laughs> the aspect ratios. Like I the crab like, taking a photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's a bit of a tension killer and a bit of mm-hmm. a mood killer. Because you can yeah. go, oh, that's whatever. I'm not. I think that's really interesting because uh, I think the aspect ratio change at the end works quite well. Yeah, um, the claustrophobia. Mm, and sort of the tunnel vision of, like, Joel's tunnel vision mm. of that mm. he must get rid of this um, threat to him and his family. It's like, I'm not going to lie, I didn't notice the aspect ratio for the nightmares. I noticed it at the end, but didn't notice it in the nightmares. It's because um, you were too afraid, and that's I was, okay. I was too scared of the creepy, pustule-filled granddad. Um, gross. It was There's gross. There's been so many horrible phrases <laughs> on this particular show. <laughs> I love it. I'm here for it. It's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I completely see what you mean about Joel's tunnel vision, yeah. though. Um, you know, he he's attributed the virus... Uh, or the threat to the family mm-hmm. um, rather than being like oh we need to you know do this to help everybody he's like you need to like fuck off because yeah. you're gonna hurt us yeah. Um, and yeah I, I think the, the tunnel vision point actually sort of hits the nail on the head perfectly mm. yeah I thought it was a they are interesting choices um, mm. and I think like Georgie said it's sort of the shots and the long shots and the change in aspect is sort of quite a key um sort of like a key choice of a24 films um which obviously this is um was there any other sort of tropes that you think you you saw that were sort of similar to other a24 films or well it, it reminded me a lot of midsummer mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. not in style choices or you know even thematically um, I think it was just the sort of disorientating nature of it. Um, yeah. It just yeah. sort of very much reminded me of, you know, Florence Pugh's journey into Swedish hell. Um, mm-hmm. You know, especially those... Ikea. Ikea. <laughs> yeah, that was a, it was a traumatic shopping yeah. experience. Um, I wonder if you could recreate, like, all the midsummer looks through an Ikea. Let's find out. Know, but I'm gonna let's, try. Let's try. <laughs> Where have we got an IKEA that we can all get There's to? There's a map inside Hampton, mate. All right, we're doing it. it. Is we're huge. Do that. It's Stay massive. tuned for that. <laughs> Watchers and listeners, we're gonna bring you some wonderful photographs. It's gonna be like a montage of us in IKEA. Yeah, yeah. It'll be great. Oh, right. yeah. I mean, you're joking, but I'm seriously game for this. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well Sick. up for it. It's fine. Um, gonna ha- it's gonna happen. Soon as we're allowed out, this is what we'll do. Yeah. First thing. To date. Uh, um, yeah, just the disorientating nature of It Comes at Night genuinely just, it, it really, I think it would make quite a good double bill, actually. Mm. You'd be there for a long time, but yeah, it right. would be a good really double bill. bill. <laughs> yeah, and you'd be really, really tired and sad, I think, at the end of it. But yes, yeah. It's an exhausting film to watch, so I think yeah. if you double build it with Midsummer, just, oh my God. What are you going to, which one's going first? This. I think it comes at nights first, yeah. Um, mainly because it's it's only what an hour and a half, mm-hmm. ninety minutes, yeah, something yeah, like that. Sure, yeah. uh, whereas Midsummer is like <laughs> considerably longer. Yeah. Especially if you're doing the the even longer director's cut as well, yeah. Um, yeah. which I haven't seen, but I've heard it's pretty. Yeah. Cool. Doesn't it? Does it add like an extra forty minutes or something like that? Like that's a, that's a punishing well, watch. That yeah. yeah, I think it'd be nice as well. Um, after all the threat of the nighttime, to have no safety and it all be daytime. So you're sort of you're safe from the nighttime, but also not safe because it's midsummer. Yeah. The the day and night double bill. Mm, that's what we'll call it. Yeah, giving away so many fresh ideas for everybody right we now. We keep doing this, don't we? Giving people Jeez. nothing but quality. 
That would be a, an interesting quarantine watch party. Hmm. Sure. It's mm, nice. I think it's going to be like a, um, five will go west for a bit. Maybe just to like chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think as well, we were saying about sort of similar A24 films, the, the use of um, the painting sort of, again, reminds me of Midsummer and all their mm. wacky paintings and their sort of tapestry and all the sort of hidden bits and bobs you get in there. Yeah, mm. um, I'd be interested to, to do another rewatch and see what else I didn't notice mm. again. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, yeah. I think the use of like traditional art in both of them is really here. He, here she goes. It's here really she goes. In both yeah. of them, I mean, the the way that Peter Bruegel the Elder paints in general, it is very much how that film is shot with those long sweeping shots. His paintings mm -hmm. feel like a sweeping shot. They encompass. Yeah, a lot of them are, are quite. Um, especially, well, especially um, the hunters in the snow. It's sort mm -hmm. of you've got the background of the little village. Um, you've got sort of quite a big escape it's just the snowy mountains and then you've got the small figures sort of in a yeah. in one corner almost so it looks like you are looking at it in a big wide angle this is it the sense of scale that he creates mm. it's that one in particular that he used in the film is a really overwhelming painting anyway mm -hmm. and i think yeah. the way they incorporate that is exactly like you said i mean i feel in midsummer when it gives you all the information you need without you knowing that you need any of it so you yeah. get a painting you're like stick picture then you're like, oh, actually, that's, that's quite pertinent. And then in midsummer, mm. you're like, there's a bear, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, no. Oh, yep. she's making a cute cup of tea. No, she's not. That's gross. That's... Mm -mm. That's you had to bring uh, up like, that one, that didn't you? Of, yeah. of course it did, it's gross. Um, so I think the way that they use traditional art in that way mm -hmm. is, is really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing I did notice is that mm. um, it, the, the the shots inside the house remind me of Hereditary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. And it's almost like a doll's house sort of yes. thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely. Kind of, especially considering how it's shot and the angles, it kind of almost looks like we're not quite a fly on the wall, but it's very mm. almost invasive, which again, mm. infections, parallels. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's kind of, yeah. It, a three three way binge of, mm. of it comes at night, hereditary, and midsummer. Now okay. that would be... but oh boy, we're just gonna add a little extra with uh, the aspect changes and the lighthouse, I which like is yes. entirely shot in a completely um, almost in a square wrong. aspect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, and that again is sort of another horror mm. film about a very unseen horror mm. i've still not watched it even That's though you good. sold it to me in the best possible way you could ever sell a film yeah. to me yeah. what was uh, it naked rod pattinson basically yes yeah. <laughs> knew it i knew it yeah. but i think i think a lot of their choices can be traced across different films and yeah. like you said about the house i know that the tracial Make it sound like I know him personally. I make sure. <laughs> um, he, he delivers me and Trey around her now. Um, he wanted, Schultz he never, Schultz. <laughs> we, he deliberately wanted to create this house that was not kind of ever properly laid out. Mm. So you never really know yeah. where it is. Um, and you never really have, you've got this very like labyrinth in sense of, of the house. Mm. And nothing's ever really set in concrete and then set mm. in stone as to what's where. And I think that works really well, like you said, about feeling really disoriented when you're watching it. Because you never really know where about in the like you said, in the ground dance room with the mm. whiskey and you're looking down on this yeah. bit and the wide angles and it's very confusing, I think. You don't Yeah, yeah it never gives you a chance to like get your bearings because you never yeah. really see it in the full daytime and you sort of mm. you're in one room and then you're in like the yeah. little space in the walls and then you're in sort of like the shed and then you don't know where you are i tell you um the every time that uh, obviously that like you were saying with the asset ratios you noticed right okay this isn't real mm -hmm. every time they sort of went to sleep i was like okay it's nightmare time <laughs> 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 yeah like I, I kind of expected that so 
yeah, in a way, I kind of see what you mean. Um, mm-hmm. It was just like a, right, okay, time for some creepy old granddad scenes. Love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Love that for us, yeah. It's granddad Jesus. time. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Mm. Like that. that sounded weird. Not keen weird. on that. No, we'll stick to what was it? The pustule covered granddad instead. <laughs> I think we found our subheading. It comes at night. It's granddad time. <laughs> We've oh, been inside no. for too long, friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There's been too many. Uh, we've. This is literally what would happen if we did that like triple horror bill, and I feel like we shouldn't do it. Do you not remember our twenty-four hour horrorathon? I do remember that. Yeah, that was madness. Yeah, what? we we did twenty four hours of horror films to raise money for Mind. Um, oh, that's amazing. Mid mid year last year, early last year, sometime. So it's kind of before I I knew you both. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. So. yeah. Before yeah. this beautiful friendship had blossomed. Um, God. and we yeah we did like a couple of like classics. We did some newer stuff. We did some. Kind of silly some stuff. Bad stuff. Yeah, yeah, some bad stuff. Um, and that was like, I think, sort of at the end of it, we finished about 10 a.m., I think, the next yeah, morning. We did like 9 till 10, I think, didn't we? Jeez. Yeah. 9 a.m. Yeah. Don't Texas Chainsaw Massacre at 4 a.m. because it will just piss you off. Yeah, it does not hold your attention at 4 a.m. You're like, oh my <laughs> God, fuck off. We sat there like, this is why did we I think, we, I, think, I think we muted it for a little bit because like <laughs> the constant yeah. yelling and the chainsaw, you're like, mm. shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> People are trying to sleep. Um, I'm not chainsaw us, maybe, but other people yeah, maybe. Yeah, other people. Yeah, it was really fun because we had like visitors pop in. So like different other members of like the squad came to watching a couple yeah. of films and we did the whole thing on Twitch. Um, oh, sweet. Which was good as well. But um, yeah, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> I feel like those three films yeah. would feel like that. It would feel yes. like 24 Well, yeah, because be um, how long was Hereditary? Was Hereditary like... Oh, I want to say 220? It's, it's, a, it's a long and hard to watch film. Uh, it's yeah. two hours longer. seven, apparently. Oh. So that's two hours seven. Uh, Midsummer, Definitely felt longer. Oh, it's Midsummer, not, yeah. Midsummer's only 10 minutes longer, two hours 18. Midsummer definitely feels longer than yeah. two and a half hours. So shooting set next to Heather, he just starts laughing her head off. Like, <laughs> these old blokes cave their head in on a rock. And she it wasn't a laugh. Laughing. It was more of like, because it's like the first thing you see. So it was like a shock noise, <laughs> but it <laughs> sounded like, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was like a, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. Wow. Yeah. Fun fact about Midsummer. Um, me and Dav, who I sometimes do podcasts with, um, we went to see Midsummer together in the middle of the day and Safe literally time. there was nobody in the cinema apart from us. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a moment where, you know, we were just talking, when we were, you know, reacting to it, we would just talk normally. Mm-hmm. And there is a moment where in fact it's when she goes into the to the shed and she sees the reflection of her sister Mm -hmm. um and there's a slight whispering in the background me and dav genuinely thought that somebody had come in behind us and both (laughs) jumped out of our seats to check because it was fucking terrifying yeah oh creepy yeah i think that sort of thing if you don't watch like a big film like that at cinema you lose a lot of because like mm. you don't have the experience that, yeah you don't have mm. that like surround sound capabilities like i thought that with us um yes there was definitely. so many bits in that that yeah. really relied on the sound being like behind you behind yeah. Really, really mm. well. yeah i recently rewatched us actually um and it doesn't have the same impact on a small screen it's still good obviously yeah but um so much more impactful on a big screen bloody hell my favorite yeah my favorite bit of uh, midsummer was when that mother and her daughter just walked out in the middle of the orgy scene actually that was, um, that <laughs> yeah. was really funny. so we went through Fantastic. a phase we went through this phase of every time we went to watch a film people would leave um, yeah. because they were in the wrong screen and was they'd come in and we no it wasn't because of us um of course not and <laughs> we'd see them and i'd go i don't think they're in the right place 
and because it would yeah. be like a mother and a young son, and we were watching Pet Cemetery, <laughs> and um, there was yeah, and it was a mother and daughter, and the daughter was probably like seventeen, eighteen, mm, maybe. Sure, yeah. Um. But like quite an older mother and then we were just like uh don't think you're in the right scene but sure whatever and then yeah there was she was pushing on his bum and then they got up and left <laughs> yeah i was like what a moment to leave i love what a that they got to, to that until. point yeah and right. then left yeah there's Absolutely. so much more that much. happened but no she's touched his bum i'm not having it no yeah. i'm leaving i'm out no, I'm look done. at that man's buttocks we are too <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, the only time I can remember being shocked at somebody being in the cinema was a guy walked in with a baby carrier, and this was to watch Predators. Nice. Mm-hmm. And me and my dad sort of went, "Huh? He's not left yet." Mm. Stayed yeah. the entire film. Yeah. Oh, Stayed the entire it's film. It's weird. It's weird. Um, now you know I'm not saying that parents can't take their kids to the cinema of course but taking a baby with you to while you watch predators feels mm. like a bit of a yeah yeah but not choice if the baby was asleep and had them big headphones on i'd be like cool. yeah okay but no to be fair i wasn't particularly looking closely at the baby no you should have asked you should have been like excuse me sir <laughs> excuse what's me, mate, the uh, deal with your baby didn't realize your baby was a big predator fan um <laughs> Jesus, but yeah, that's we watched. Very strange. Uh, we watched Cats. Um, no, that was the most surreal cinematic experience, and it was mm. obviously it was dreadful. Um, that's a film. That's, and it's, no, that's it's definitely not, a barely, film. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more of just an experience, but not a good one. Um, and it was wow. just us two. There was um, like another pair sort of behind us, and then a mother arrived. Yeah. 45 minutes in yeah. I think I mean a point in that you would think they wouldn't let you in with a toddler a toddler maybe just older than a toddler yeah it was running I'm, not, around, I'm not very so. good with baby ages I don't know what how old children are but like she just obviously was so bored and hated it that she was just like strolling up and down the aisles yelling that she needed a witty and then yelling that literally she also yelling. like literally like shouting and just wandering around and then they were taking photos in the cinema with the flash on and huh. yeah and then they stayed for about another 45 minutes and then left it was so <laughs> strange <laughs> just wow. didn't get it um I, 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 that kid's right? gonna have issues growing older having seen cats at a young age or they're gonna be a furry so either way so yeah like you said gonna have yeah, I was trying mm. to be polite, but yeah. Ha. Mm. Huh. <laughs> Grim. Yeah. I, I'm not sure who I feel sorry more for, the kid or you two. We had half Brian from McDonald's. We, we, <laughs> we took him back, he's practicing. Um, <laughs> Dedication, I love it. We just figured no one else would be in there because it was 11 o'clock on a Sunday, so we thought, oh, they won't mind. And it ah. was almost just us. Um, I we've imagine got, that. Ki- Ever so I was gonna say topic. it's fine, but I imagine that cats is what having a bad trip and LSD would be like. Yeah. So now I don't ever need to do LSD. It's great. Yeah. It saved you the time. It was really bad. I didn't know what was going on. I'd never like read about it or like watched the stage show or understood what nope. a, what a jellical was. So I was just like, <laughs> what is happening? I have no idea. But Idris Elba thrusting. Oh my His god, it's just no, it's so creepy. Crotch. I just, I it's, no, it's, I don't know. Oh, it's it's out. Again, this is a treasure trove of sound bites. I'm just gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good lord. You are welcome. Honestly, it's so creepy when they're like slinking around in their Wrapping little... their, like avatar tails. No. Yeah, it's horrid. It's more Judy... terrifying than it comes at night. Like uh, Judy Dench is wearing a fur coat. She's wearing the skin of someone else. I mm. And then she just looks at the camera and she's like, I bet you're wondering what you're doing here. And you feel like really quite violated that she's just staring into your soul yeah. in this creepy cat outfit, being like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I don't know, Judy. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Judy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll make better choices next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Brilliant. not great. 
We did get violently off topic. Mm. It's A24, eh? A24. <laughs> I think that's, that's A24's plan at all times. We're completely disarmed and we're disorientated and we don't know what's going on. Exactly. And that's why A24. I'm looking forward to... Um, um, oh, uh, Dev Patel. Green Knight. 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 Yeah, yes. that looks beautiful. Can't wait. Yeah. Mm. Although it does have a fox in it, so I'm worried about the fox. Mm. If his fox, fox companion okay. dies, I'm not going to be happy. No. Oh, this is ginger no. slander, and I won't stand for it. No, we will riot in the streets. <laughs> or you will. I'll, I will. I'll not. Yeah. No. yeah. Yeah. Just by myself, just being like, the fox the deserves better. <laughs> yeah. But you could get like Peter on your side and stuff, and they'd like come with you because they'd be like, oh, a fox in distress, we'll come. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, solid. Right. Well, Zoom is <laughs> telling me that we're running out of time. <laughs> so, let's round this recording up. Um, so it comes at night. What do we think? What are we going to give it rating wise? Worth another watch? Would you recommend it to your friends? Definitely worth a watch. I'd recommend it to some of my friends. Um, the ones that do like a little bit more sort of, I don't want to use the term elevated horror because that's really sort of derogatory. Uh, cerebral. Yeah. Cerebral horror. Because um, sure. yeah. I think if you prefer sort of the slashes and yeah. you know your, your screams your yeah. nightmare on elm streets it's kind of not going to be for you but if you kind of like yeah. something a little bit more thinky and a bit oh, it it <laughs> comes a day um yeah uh, I, I, I would say <laughs> Please don't say that Black Phillip's going to come get me. I don't like that. That's that's not for me. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I, I would recommend. I would definitely recommend it comes at night. Um, mm -hmm. People that do like a little bit more um, substance and not as much sort of gory slasheriness. Yeah, and as well summed up. Would you agree, Georgie B? We run. Yeah, no, I would. I think um, I agree with what you say. I think it's the uh, in a way that a lot of A24 films are, it's, it's um, pretentious. I'm just going to come out and say it, I don't care. Um, yep. Because I'm quite a pretentious person as well. I'm not a particularly like a film buff, but I really appreciate the way that A24 make their films and how they market mm -hmm. them. But like you said, it's quite a cerebral um, horror film. Don't get me wrong, I love a good, you know, cheap horror. And I think this is a really cool counterpart to it so mm. when you say that you'd recommend it to some of your friends not all i think that's a that's a really good way of putting it yeah. i would yeah. just like to put a disclaimer out there like mm -hmm. i really like scream 4 so i can't i'm not dissing the slasher genre at mm. all so, yeah, like, all no way yeah. there's there's it, room in our hearts for all these horror films mm -hmm. yeah. and the more there are the better exactly mm -hmm. cool. variety is the spice of life Exactly. Indeed. The spice of life. Now I'm just thinking about Dune. Mm, yeah. Nice. It's yeah. going to happen. That was yeah. a terrible impression, and I'm it not was. sorry for it. It's going to go down in history, that now. I'm going to make that the little snippet that we send out. Oh, God. I'm not. There's a I many. should have done better. You should have done better. You should have come I mean... in your Renaissance Obi-Wan, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Blanket and everything. Yeah. That was blankets and towels. Amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a real insight into your lockdown right there. <laughs> How do you Looks spend sad. your time? Yeah. All right. I just thought it'd be funny. Leave me alone. It was funny. It was amazing. It really was. We're going to wrap this up on that wonderful okay. note. Um, in this has been in towels and blankets. This has been It Comes at Night, uh, another horror section video and podcast. You can check out the other ones that we've done. We've also covered um, The Descent. We've covered the one that we also did the other day. What was it, Dodgy? As Above, Say Below. As Above, Say Below. Thank you very much. And we have a whole series on uh, home invasion horror films, which also features It Comes at Night. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all from us for now. Thank you very much, Eamon, for joining us. It was a Thank pleasure you for having me. and a joy. You're welcome anytime. 
we will be continuing to bring you these videos as we go along. So that's all from us. Be safe, stay inside, and um, we'll see you all very soon.